Over the next couple of decades, you can be confident that some of today's popular technologies will fade away into history and that there will be other technologies, some that may exist today and some that may not yet have been invented, that will dominate our industry. Those of us who pick the right ones to learn and gain experience in will have endless opportunities. Those who pick the wrong ones could find themselves in the unemployment line. Let's start our picking with programming languages. Talking about winners and losers in programming languages is about the most dangerous thing an author can do. It's like a US politician talking about cutting social security. You just don't do that and expect to survive. You see, programming languages do not succeed or fail based on how good they are or any other objective criteria. Talking about programming languages is like talking about religion, and developers embrace their favorite language with all the passion of a religious leader, confident in the rightness of their choice. So let's start by defining a criteria for winning or losing. This is a career course, so the only criteria that matters is whether there will be people willing to pay developers to program in that language. I don't care how elegant it is, or that it can reduce keystrokes by 20%, or even if it can reduce coding time in half. All that matters is will people pay you to use it. Throughout my career there have been endless new languages, each one trumpeted by programming intellectuals as the next great language. Yet somehow most of us are stuck writing JavaScript. See what I mean? Languages carry a lot of inertia. New languages take years to gain widespread adoption, and there are ample opportunities for them to lose momentum and fade away. Software in general lasts far longer than anyone expects when it is created. Ask Microsoft. They're still struggling to get people to abandon Windows XP, which launched in 2001. The best opportunity for a new language to really catch on is when it is the native development language for a new platform. C-sharp would have been an intellectual exercise were it not seen as the native language of the .NET platform. JavaScript would never have succeeded on its merits had Brendan Eich not made it the native language of the Netscape browser. Nobody would learn Objective-C were it not for iOS. Even Java thrives primarily because it is everywhere. So when it comes to deciding which languages to learn, ignore everything that everyone says about language elegance and efficiency. Coding is a small part of the life cycle costs of a software project anyway. Ignore what is popular. We programmers love our new toys and will adopt languages because they are new and cool even if the demand for them is small. Instead, look to the platforms, as we will in the next clip. The native or most popular language on a dominant platform will consistently offer job opportunities. But what about outliers? New languages that may appear and offer great opportunities. Simple. Look for the outlier platforms and choose the dominant language on that platform. There are three areas that come to mind where we may yet see major outliers in terms of programming languages. First is functional programming. I have mixed feelings about this one. People have been talking about functional programming for years. It has regained interest lately with regards to big data, a term and field we'll look at more closely in the next module. Could it tip within the next couple of decades and there be a massive transition to functional languages? It's possible and worth keeping an eye on, but I don't see it happening yet. Today's computers continue to increase in speed, but not because they run faster. Instead, we're seeing multiple processors. Today even phones have four CPU cores and graphic systems have far more. Keep an eye out for languages that might make it easier and safer to break down complex problems to be handled on multiple threads and processes. If someone figures out a way to make that easy, watch out. It could become an overnight sensation. The third area relates to ease of use. Visual Basic was an outlier back in the day because it made it easy for anyone to write Windows applications. It did so by providing a high level of abstraction over Windows programming that allowed people to solve a very large set of problems very easily and to use components and custom code to handle the rest. That was lost with the transition to .NET, and we have yet to see anything quite like it in the language front. But the demand is there, so it could happen again. I do not consider languages to be a key part of a long-term developer career strategy. Most developers today are polyglots, comfortable in more than one language. By the time it becomes apparent that a new language is offering great career opportunities, you should have sufficient time to learn it. As long as you keep your eyes on the market and the platforms instead of what happens to be the latest hot topic of conversation, you'll do fine.